welcome to the International Social Sessions, a series where we're digging into some of the hottest and most important topics in social media with some of the speakers who will be taking to the stage at the International Social Summit in Barcelona in May. We're going to be finding out about them and what drives them in their careers, as well as diving into a specific social topic to get some useful insights and expertise that will hopefully help you whether you attend the event or not. I'm Gemma Houghton, Director of Marketing at WebCertain, the agency behind the event. And today I'm joined by Diego Bartholomew, who is Head of Research at Transperfect, where he has recently been focused on generative AI. Hi, Diego. Thank you for being here. Hey, Gemma. Yeah, a pleasure. So AI is not something new, um, but it's definitely something that has exploded recently for a lot of people and become much more mainstream and more talked about than it was. What is it that excites you most about it and how did you get into working with AI? I'm really excited about AI these days because it's uh, it's everywhere. And since the launch of uh, ChatGPT a little over a year ago, it has been basically mainstream and companies trying to find where it can be really applied uh, in a sensible way. Although AI has been uh, around since the, since the 50s, um, Personally, I started to be involved in AI with my PhD in electrical engineering many years ago, and then it evolved into an interest in, in machine translation. I was doing that for many, many years. And then from that, I transitioned into other natural language processing applications and now generative AI. Uh, it's very, very exciting, especially combining models, text, images, speech, videos, and it's it's crazy at the pace the, the field is evolving. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And I think it's something that everybody is really keen to learn more about and understand what role it can play for them. And you're going to be joining the AI panel at the International Social Summit in May. So if we're talking specifically about social media, what do you think are the most interesting use cases um, for AI when it comes to social? Yeah, social is one of the areas where I think uh, AI can play a role. Probably AI can play a role in uh, basically any task. And, and we would see that people uh, helped by AI are significantly more productive and better and give better quality, less time into a task, being more efficient. But in social in particular, we're applying it in, in a variety of, of scenarios. One of them is customer understanding or listening to what the customers are saying. AI helps us summarize those interactions, uh, understand what the topics, the most important topics are, understand the sentiment, for instance, uh, and then extract insights in uh, a question answer in mode. So you can really talk to the, that data and make sure you can dive deeper into, uh, into what's being said about your brand, for instance, in, in social. That's one area. Uh, that's typically called um, uh, synth AI, quote unquote, because it's essentially leveraging AI technologies to derive insights from your data. And that can mean basically uh, anything. On the other side, you can also leverage those techniques to actually create content. And for instance, instead of um, getting the person uh, a reply without any help, you can use previous interactions as well as companies, uh, product data or service data to make sure that the person handling social media is more efficient in the responses and more consistent. Um, and that's another area where, where we have seen good promise. But uh, in general, everything is possible. So in the end, what we typically recommend our customers is focus on a business problem, start small, and then iterate if it's successful. Yeah, and that's good advice with most things, I think, in marketing in general is is to start small. And I think with international companies, that's something that can be a big challenge because they've got many markets and different platforms and things to manage. So, again, this is probably good advice. Maybe start with one or two markets and roll things out more globally once you've seen results and you've got a process more, more defined. Correct, yeah, because... What happens with AI and especially with generative AI as it's so new and there are so many applications and also it's because it's so overhyped, uh, many initiatives might fail okay. and we need to prepare for that. And uh, if that happens, that's okay. There will be another area where it could be applied, but if it works and if it works well, then the goal is to scale it and make it uh, uh, as efficient as yeah. possible down the line. 
And aside from efficiency, which is obviously a, a core part with AI, what are any of the other advantages that you think businesses who really use it well and cleverly and, and mm-hmm. invest a bit in understanding it can gain over those who aren't using it? Well, efficiencies is really one of the main ones because efficiencies are important to drive costs down and also time to market. Yeah. No, Time to market is essential these days. You need to be fast, you need to be efficient, and you really need to get uh, anything almost in real time, right? So uh, I think that's probably the, the efficiency is one of the main drivers. We are seeing cost reduction as well. Um, if you, the use case I was mentioning before about community management, for instance, that helps brands be more efficient as well and therefore reduce costs because their uh, community managers will spend less time uh, uh, a- answering those queries on, or trying to find the information that is relevant to answer those. So, so in general, uh, we are seeing that efficiency that translates into cost time reduction and also another important thing is is the quality because in the end if you leverage technology to uh, understand what has happened in the past that helps you be more consistent and better in the future absolutely and with anything that's new and overhyped there's always a lot of misconceptions and, and misinformation out there what are the biggest misconceptions that you think are problematic when it comes to ai that people still really believe at the moment yeah, probably uh, the the overhype is really the the misconception. Uh, and I remember in December uh, 2022, after ChatGPT was launched, many studies were saying that the jobs will be destroyed, uh, everything would change, uh, we'll have everyone out of the job in basically no time. And here we are, one year and four months later, more or less, and um, we're still here. Uh, <clears throat> probably we're trying things out and, and trying to see where generative AI can help us. There are a lot of alternatives uh, to OpenAI as well. The number of models that you can test and try and implement are, are huge. And then uh, essentially uh, things take time to change. No, it's not only a technology, it's people, processes as well, and data. Uh, and to me, the biggest misconception is that uh, AI can solve everything. And, and, and probably that's that might be true in the long term but not in the short term because we need to overcome the limitations and make sure we apply it where it makes sense and in the way it makes sense for our companies and our people so we uh we need to do it right essentially absolutely and that is something that equally some businesses especially maybe leaders within those businesses who don't really understand it much are very concerned about the, the dangers of it and the risks that it can pose what do you think are the biggest risks other than users not using it properly, I suppose? And how can businesses really minimize that to make sure that they're not going to run into problems when they are using it? Yeah, the risk, uh, it really depends on the area we are focusing. The main risk as a company, I think, is the data privacy and confidentiality. So making sure that your, da- your data probably today with all these AI solutions is the biggest company asset in any company, in any vertical. Um, and you don't want the data to be compromised and you want to use it in a, in a very efficient way. So making sure that your partner or the AI model that you're using uh, is confidential, secure, and treats your data with uh, terms and conditions that are relevant for your business. So not using it for third parties, not using it to train their own models, but only to train your own models. I think that's a very, very important uh, topic and probably that's a risk. And then if we get deeper into into social a, a little bit, one of the biggest challenges there in actual implementation is hallucinations. We have all seen uh, ChatGPT and other models hallucinate because they are not uh, giving the right data, they are making up things, and maybe it feels that the answer to any question is perfect, but then you have those little nuances that make make it bad. Uh, and to me, that's one of the risks as well. So making sure that you minimize uh, that wrong output. And finally, probably the last one is uh, actually uh, employees leaking confidential information. Probably in social is, is not that relevant, but although it could be. But uh, that's, a, that's a problem we have seen across verticals, Samsung, employees, uh, uh, um, 
leaking confidential information into OpenAI's models. We have seen lawyers in the US using uh, ChatGPT and side uh, court cases that never existed. And all these type of things are critical and we need to do it responsibly and doing it right, as we were saying before. So that takes a journey and it's one step at a time, but it's a lot about also uh, education and uh, making sure that the employees know where it can be used and where it can't be used and for what use cases and try to maximize the return of those investments. Yeah. And that's it. It's putting processes in place, really understanding how it can make sense for the business and then making sure everyone's aware of that because it is going to be used more. There's no doubt about that. So it's businesses need to start at least getting their heads around how they're going to manage it within their own organization. Yeah, it's here yeah. to stay. Yeah, it's here to stay very clearly. And this is yeah. probably a very, very difficult question, but I'm going to ask it anyway, which is about where you see the next few years going. So obviously things have, have taken what feels like to many of us who aren't really involved in the space quite a big leap in the last year or so. So what do you see for kind of the next year or two and then maybe five years ahead of just what kind of role AI will be playing for marketers? Yeah, uh, f- uh, five years is probably a yeah. extremely long time in this field. So I'm not sure if I can <laughs> predict that long. Uh, but uh, one of the things that I'm most excited about is the multimodality in AI models. So ChatGPT, when 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 it was launched in, in, in November 2022, it was mostly text. So we were able to generate text and, and that, I mean, it's working quite fine, although you need uh, solutions as well to, to really make it better so that it doesn't feel like a generated content. Uh, but then uh, we started seeing models that do text to image. So you enter a prompt and you get images. Uh, now we have also systems that you enter text and I'll put uh, audio or video. And, and now the possibilities combining models is really what is exciting. We have so, all seen these videos that you can generate today of a person singing a song or speaking uh, and only with a, uh, an image, so starting from an image. And then combining all these outputs and making AI multimodal is really exciting because it can help us understand the world, uh, understand videos, understand podcasts, understand what's actually happening. And moving that into our processes and workflows will be exciting. One other area as well, I think that will be more and more important in the future is what it's called AI agents. So you you can already today define a, an agent. So we'll, it would be an automated uh, entity, if mm-hmm. you want, that uh, does some things for you. So uh, you can uh, tell it to every Friday at, uh, I don't know, 8 p.m. I want to order pizza and get it delivered uh, home. And you can uh, make sure that you build it and then the AI would actually do everything for you and you get the pizza delivered without doing nothing. And that's exciting in the, at the personal level, maybe, but also at the business side, it's also very, very important. In the community management uh, space I, I, was, uh, I was mentioning before, you can design an agent that uh, behaves as you want to behave and, and really uh, gets all the information from the customer before uh, replying, for instance. Uh, or if you are extracting insights from large amounts of data, an AI agent can help you guide that conversation so that you can get the best insights out of that data without actually you knowing what you need to find. So uh, to me, those are the main excitements in the near future. So multimodality and AI agents, and then probably we'll see a lot of uh, uh, applications that people will start implementing at scale, which probably are far uh, yeah. our imagination can, can think yeah, today. That's yeah. the most exciting thing about it is that there's things you can't even imagine that in maybe not too long a time we'll all be doing as standard. It's quite yeah, interesting to see how it develops. Yeah, and it changes so fast. I mean, only in, for instance, open source models that are being launched every day, uh, there is a model every day, basically. And commercial models, they are being updated also every yeah. day. So the amount of things that you can do uh, increases exponentially, basically. And for instance, just uh, uh, yesterday, uh, a new model was launched, Claude 3 from Anthropic, uh, a company building also large language models. 
that has a what it's called a context window, which is uh, and and Gemini from Google as well. That has a million more or less, let's say, a million words. It's a million tokens, but a million words. So that means that they can ingest so much content and derive insights from that. So these type of things will be moving so fast that we just need to keep an eye on those and then start experimenting. Yeah, absolutely. So finally, I just want to ask you about the event itself in May, why you're looking forward to speaking there and why you think people watching this should be booking their tickets to be there too. Well, it's an exciting event. I mean, the the, the speakers and the topics are really uh, relevant and very, very interesting. So I think everyone should be there uh, with... Uh, uh, with uh, uh, a lot of energy to meet people, to interact and to share opinions and, and share best practices and also to learn from the speakers and, and panelists. So I think it will be an exciting event as always and it will be uh, a pleasure to be there. Well, we're really looking forward to having you and really appreciate your time today. So thank you very much for sharing with us today. Yeah, thanks to you. I'm looking forward. 